Hello everyone, my name is Marc Lelarge and I will present online sampling, which is a joint work with Weiss Azizian and Guillaume Baudard. We are all working at INRIA and INS. Weiss was the main contributor of this Julia package, but he was not able to do this small video. So the first main feature of our package online sampling is to use the reactive programming framework, which was introduced in the 80s, mainly to do programming for embedded systems. So this means that we will deal with stream of values as input, and we will output stream of values. So our system will be a stream processor. It's synchronous in the sense that there is a global clock for all the processes. So here is a very simple example of a counter uh, in our uh, DSL. So you start by initializing a memory X with value 0. Then you are incrementing this value by 1 at each time step. So at time t equals 1, you are just initializing X and outputting its value 0. Then the previous value was 0, so you are incrementing it by 1 and outputting its value, and so on. So what we built is a domain-specific language with Julia macros. So here there are three macros, node, init, and prev, which are straightforward. And we'll discuss it a little bit more in, uh, in this talk. So we are interested in probabilistic programming, uh, meaning that we need to deal with distribution. So we'll use the round function in order to deal with distribution of random variables, x. And another macro, observe, which will condition the random variable y to be equal to a value v. So a typical example in this framework is the so-called hidden Markov model, depicted here, where you have a hidden state x evolving as a Markov chain, so meaning that x of t depends on from x t minus 1, and x t plus 1 from x of t, and so on. But you do not have access to this hidden state. You only have access to the y of t, the observation, and y of t is a possibly random function of x of t. So here is a more practical example of what we can do with uh, our reactive probabilistic programming. The green dot here represents a plane crossing a fjord uh, where you have some mountains on the left, a lake, and then some mountains on the right. And your task will be to track this plane given only information about its altitude, which is depicted by the red line over there. So here is a simple example of uh, reactive probabilistic programming with online sampling. So we, we will use the round in order to deal with distribution in order to define a random model which is exactly the one uh, depicted uh, bef before. So you are initializing with the macro we already saw init the initial state, so the hidden state x0 with a Gaussian random variable, which means 0 and variance 1. And then xt is just a random variable where the mean is xt minus 1 plus some speed. So for example, speed is a positive number, meaning that the plane will go to the right on some standard deviation on the speed, let's say. So this defines the uh, hidden process x of t, and you, have, you will have access only to y of t, which is, an, in this case, a noisy observation of the hidden process. So the model is returning both the hidden state and y, which will be correspond to the observation. So this is the model, and now you need to define an inference uh, function, which is called HMM for hidden Markov model. By using the same uh, macro node, There is a new macro node call that will apply the model in order to get the value of x and y. But now you see that the inference model is taking an input, uh, which is an observation. And you are using we are using the other macro observe in order to tell uh, to the inference model that the value y is equal to the observation ops. And of course, what we want to get is some information about the hidden state. So this is why this inference model is returning the value of x. 
So our task is basically to integrate uh, information uh, from the observation in the hidden state, uh, which in priority is just marginalizing some information, but it's uh, most of the time a hard problem with uh, complicated uh, integral to compute. So for example, here, if you know that the plane is at this altitude, you see that there are a lot of points in the mountain where the plane could be with this exact altitude. And thi this, this is why we have a, a lot of points here. And you see that there are more points on the left than on the, on the right, corresponding to a prior that I did put into the model that my plane at the start tend to be on the left of the lake and not on the right. So what we do here is we are just sampling what we call particles uh, according to this prior, so more particles on the left and the right than on the right, and then we compute the likelihood of each particle given the observation, which is this height. So you see that particle with a high likelihood will have a big arrow like this, corresponding to a matching uh, height the with the observed uh, one. And then you will uh, apply the model to each particle, so you will do a simulation uh, of the plane, n of them, for each particle, and each time you will recompute the new likelihood. Okay. So it turns out that in some cases, uh, indeed uh, when you are doing with linear uh, relation between Gaussian, so which would correspond to a flat uh, curve for the mountains here, you can compute explicitly, actually, what is the distribution of uh, this uh, 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 particle when the number of particles tends to infinity, and it's Gaussian, and it's written on the uh, it's explicitly written on the right. So in this case, exact inference is sim is, uh, is doable, and indeed this is exactly the Kalman filter. So this is the second main feature of our library. We will try to do both. Uh, to mix exact and approximate inference, so to do exact inference uh, as long as it's possible and only rely on sampling when we are not able to do the exact computation. So this is what we call the semi-symbolic uh, inference, uh, where you launch an independent execution, so which are called uh, particle, and you need to compute the likelihood of each particle. So this is done thanks to the run function on the observe macro. Then you gather all this output value on likelihood to get, to get an approximation of the posterior distribution. When it's possible, you try not to do sampling, but to do exact inference, so to compute explicitly the law of the hidden state x. And we will use belief propagation algorithm uh, in order to, to do that in closed form. When it's not possible, you, you do the sampling and get an, an approximation of your uh, posterior distribution. So for example, in the previous uh, small animation, I just uh, use one particle in order to get the linear uh, mountain, in the linear mountain case, the, go the Gaussian shape with the gold Kalman filter. So let's look at a uh, little bit the internals of or a library. So here is a, a very simple slide on uh, synchronous programming. So mainly <coughs> stream function correspond to state machines. So they are very similar to iterators uh, in Julia, where you have a st initial state S naught, and then a transition function taking both a state, an input, and producing a new state on an output. So typically, the init and prev uh, value will be hidden in the state, and the input will be either the location of the particle or the observation, and the output will be the, the posterior distribution. So you are dealing with a stream, so it's you, you start from a, a state is not, then you are uh, receiving an input y not, producing an output uh, o not, and you are in state s1, and you continue like that. So this is uh, done thanks to Julia's uh, macro. So each time you use the macro node, we are indeed uh, building uh, three different functions. The first one to dispatch between the init and not init, 
and then there is a f init function which will be used only at the beginning uh, when you are initializing your your state and uh, f not init which wi uh, will uh, do the streaming uh, once initialization initialization has been done so this is a transition function and you see that for this transition function you are using explicitly the, the state uh, as an argument on a notebook. So here uh, I will describe what happened with uh, macro prev. So there is uh, an issue when you are using uh, prev, you need to check that uh, the variable e has been initialized. So uh, if it's not initialized, it typically at time t not then you don't want to ex execute the code. And you want to propagate this not init type into the rest of your, uh, uh, your program. So this is what, what is written here. And we are using IR tools in order to do this uh, transformation because macros are not enough. You need to have access to type information during compilation. So here is a very simple example where the function g is either printing hello if it has only one argument or world with two arguments. And this is a, a, a foo function where you have a counter x initialized at 1 and incrementing by 1 and then you are playing the function g on x or x on prev x. Okay? So an auditor has not been discussed but what it does is from this definition of a node it will create a Julia iterator for three time step applying this string function. And we will print the value of x at each time. So what happened at the very beginning, prev is not defined, so it's not in it. So what uh, <coughs> our language will do is it will not execute this part of the code. So the output will be just applying g of x, which is hello, and print n of x, which is 1. And then you are using the not init version of your function. So you are applying both uh, g to x and x prev x and so you are printing hello world on the value of x which is 2 and so on for 3 times 10. So now I will describe a little bit uh, the sequential Monte Carlo algorithm. So I'm going back to the example of the plane where you need to track the plane knowing only a noisy version of the, the its altitude. So at the beginning, okay, you know that the plane is on the left, so you have a prior on the left. So you, you will sample a lot of particles, more on the left than on the right of the lake. And you will compute for each particle the likelihood of this particle given the observation. So in this, in this particular case, you see that the uh, a particle which is here is very likely because it, it has the same attitude as this one. A particle which is here, will over here, will have also the same altitude. Here, will have the same altitude, but also on, on the right of the lake, actually. Okay? So if we, you sample some particles here, they are pretty likely because they are at the, the right altitude compared to the observation. And now, uh, for the next step, what you do is you move the particle according to the dynamic of the plane, and you recompute the likelihood given the new observation. So for example here, you, you see that you went from this point to this one. So this removes a lot of uh, possible uh, particles because if you were on the left part of this hill, then in order <coughs> you should have uh, crossed this mountain, so the altitude should have decreased and then, uh, and then uh, increased again, which is not what happened. So these particles are very unlikely, and you see that now the algorithm is concentrating on only three possible candidates for the position of the plane. And as you go on like this, you will get a more and more accurate uh, tracking of the plane. And you will end up, uh, when you travel all this mountain, with a fairly accurate position of your plane uh, like this. So all the particles have roughly the same estimate for the position. And now you are crossing the lake, and you see that here actually there is a gap, meaning that the altitude is a noisy version of the true altitude. But what is important on the lake is the altitude is not giving you any information because it's just flat. So uh, when you see that the plane is not, its uh, altitude is not evolving, the only thing you know is you are somewhere on the lake, but you, you don't know really where. 
So here what the particles are doing, they are just following the dynamics of the plane which is encoded in your model. So you see that uh, since you are doing simulation uh, with various speed, you, you have a, a, a cloud of points which is not as tight as before. And then what happens is you reach the, the other border of the lake and since you know that the plane is going to the right, you basically, in a few steps, will be sure that the, of the position of the plane. Some particles are late, but most of them are uh, consistent, and you go on like this to be still uh, very uh, 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 consistent within all the cloud of particles in, in, in this case here. So here is the code associated to the previous uh, small illustration. So first, the model for the plane. So as I told you, I am taking a prior uh, for the initial position of my plane, which is on the left of the lake. So this is why I have a minus 10 here. Then the model for my uh, new position is just uh, like what we saw before. So I'm moving with a constant speed and with some uh, noise in the speed here. Uh, now the altitude is uh, this h uh, random variable and it's again a function of the altitude so we assume that the shape of the mountain is known and it's given by this function and then there is some uh, noise for the measurement. So the model is returning both the hidden state x that you want to evaluate and h which is altitude of the, of the, the plane that you will observe. So this is for the model of the plane. So this is called a state space model in, in statistics. And here is an inference model from the observation. So again, we are using the same macro node. But now the infer uh, function is taking argument ops. So the first thing is do we are doing is we are calling this model to produce the x and h. And now using the observe uh, macro in order to tell or inference model that the, uh, the, the altitude that is measured at time state t is given by OPS. And what we want is to infer the position of the plane, which is uh, the x value. So this is why infer is returning the x value. Now, uh, the last macro that we saw briefly is a node uh, iter macro. And this will uh, create uh, uh, an iterator of cloud of, pa of particles with n particles, and each particle will follow this particular model, model, and the likelihood will be computed for each particle thanks to this observe statement here. So again, if I want to explain a little bit what random observe, are, observe macro are doing, I will take a, a, a simpler model, which I calling the observe Gaussian random walk. So this is very similar to a previous example, but uh, I have a, a, a Gaussian random walk. So x1 is a Gaussian random variable. And then you are making increments which are Gaussian uh, with mean 0 and variance 1. So this is the x process. And the observation is the y process. And you are making an observation of your random variable x with some noise sigma. So sigma, you can think of it as a, a very small uh, noise so that you almost observe the x in this uh, statement uh, here. And what you want to get is an information about x. So this is uh, <coughs> both my model and my inference uh, are built in uh, the same function. And so what uh, the macro observe is doing here is computing the log probability density function of y, which is known because it's written here. And actually, you have an explicit formula in this case. Uh, at time t, if, the, uh, if you observe ops of t, you, you are sampling a particle x of t, and so you can compute this explicitly, and this is uh, log pdf of Gaussian random variable uh, centered at x of t and with variance sigma. Now this creates the sequential Monte Carlo uh, particle filter with n particles. So the SMC algorithm, sequential Monte Carlo algorithm, will uh, sample new hidden state at each observation 
x uh, ops of t, and then compute the corresponding likelihood with this observed statement of the new observation given x of t thanks to this formula. So this will uh, be added to the weight of the particle. And since you are adding the log of PDF, uh, th the weight of the particle corresponding to correspond to the log likelihood of this particular trajectory of, the of one particle. So here you, you, you can note that actually you, you do not need to sample uh, y of t. The only thing you need to, to do is to know its distribution in this observe because you want to compute the log PDF. And uh, again, this is implemented at the higher level by wrapping sample variables in a special uh, type, which, which are a tracker. tracker. So here is uh, the observed random uh, work. And I will consider a case with uh, 1,000 uh, particles. So I'm running the sequential Monte Carlo with 1,000 particles. I'm making 300 observations. And you see that the observations are kind of uh, strange because I'm looking at a random work with no drift, but the observations are just linear from 1 to 300. So this is a very unlikely path for uh, an observation. And I'm making also observations which are very informative because the noise in the observation is very small. So this is what happened. So in blue, you have the observation which corresponds to the line and which are given to you. So this is a deterministic function. And here are uh, 1,000 samples of different trajectory of random works. And you see that, of course, this is a very unlikely path for uh, a, a random work. So that uh, my model is, is, is not sampling uh, particles following the, the observation. And indeed, in red here, you have the path of the particle, which is the with the highest weight uh, according to the SMC uh, algorithm. So here, clearly, uh, this is a, a, a drawback of the uh, sequential Monte Carlo that I, I just defined. But there is a trick. Uh, what you can do, since you have an observation at each time step, you can do what people call resampling, and for this we are using the uh, Julia library directly, where at each time step uh, you kill some particles, the unlikely one, and you keep only the very likely ones. So for each time step there will be at least one particle that will do a jump toward bias towards the, the top of this figure, and you see that you can follow uh, them. So here again, I'm using 1,000 uh, particles, but since I'm resampling at each time step, uh, you can hardly see them. And in red, you have the, 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 part the trajectory of the random work, which is the most likely. So this is in a very simple case where you have observation at each time step. But what happens if you have uh, less observation? So this is the case where you see the you, you have one observation e every 20 time steps, corresponding to this blue dot. And I'm applying resampling again. And uh, this is quite clear here what I'm doing. I'm picking at uh, uh, 1,000 random walks uh, for 20 time steps here. And then at this point, I'm just killing all the unlikely random walks given this observation and starting again from this point and so on. Okay. I end up with this weird uh, red trajectory, which is not at all uh, a random work. It's not continuous, but which is uh, the, the particle with the most, uh, the, the highest weight. Now, this corresponds to a period of uh, observation 20. And you see that you are not able to, to fit the real observation. And it gets worse and worse when you are uh, increasing the distance between the information, the observation. Here, the distance is 50, and I'm not able, and it's even worse with the uh, random weight. But indeed, in this uh, particular case, with a Gaussian random variable, it turns out that you can do the math and compute explicitly the law of your random variable condition to go through this observation. So here, uh, it's you can do it using an algorithm which is called belief propagation. And we integrated this uh, belief propagation algorithm in our sequential Monte Carlo algorithm. So here is one sample obtained thanks to uh, uh, belief propagation uh, of uh, uh, just one particle uh, condition to go through the observed value of the random work. 
But indeed, uh, in this case, since you are able to compute everything, you know the distribution entirely, so you don't need to sample if you want the full in, uh, distribution of your uh, hidden state. It's given by this covariance uh, structure. And you can check that actually <coughs> you are doing the right computation because each block here corresponds to what is called a Brownian bridge in uh, probability. And the covariance of Brownian bridge is known and given by this uh, small uh, picture on this explicit formula, which you, uh, you, you find again here. So, oops, sorry. Here is a, uh, an example where we are mixing uh, symbolic inference uh, and uh, for the speed of the trailer uh, and uh, non-linear uh, versions of sampling uh, for estimating the, the position. So on the left, uh, we are uh, dealing only with particles. On, on the right, uh, since we are using a linear model for the speed, you can do symbolic computation for the speed. And you see that exactly here, actually, on the left, uh, the trailer was stuck at some point, whereas it was uh, fairly good uh, tracked with uh, SMC with symbolic computation. Indeed, you can see it uh, even better here. So in blue, this is the real speed of my trailer. In you, you can hardly see it because in red, this is what is obtained with belief propagation um, algorithm, and in green, this is uh, the one with a particle filter, so doing only simulation, and you see that at some point it gets stuck with a, a, a speed of zero for some time, and so you, you lose track of your, of your uh, trailer. So something that I did not describe is that when you are doing uh, symbolic inference, uh, you need to care a little bit about the memory usage, so it's not clear a priori that you do not need to have access to the wall pass until time t in order to do your computation. But uh, we, we can show that uh, when you are doing uh, what people call filtering, this is indeed the case uh, in, in our framework. So we have a streaming process with bounded memory, and we are using uh, Julia ref to discard nodes automatically. So to summarize online sampling, uh, main features are a streaming sequential Monte Carlo with bounded memory. Uh, belief propagation integrated for linear Gaussian and beta Bernoulli. So exact computation is possible. You can recover Kalman filter if you want. And uh, the main feature is that the user should only provide the model, and then the particle filter will be built automatically. And in particular, belief propagation will be used automatically without any uh, specification of the user. So all the code for the video are available on, on the GitHub. There are uh, related Julia packages, but none of them are uh, dealing in a streaming scenario. So Turing uh, is uh, gen on Gen are general purpose probabilistic programming. Uh, they have implementation of sequential Monte Carlo. Uh, Reactive MP is uh, somewhat different. It's not using uh, SMC, but it's uh, using an extension of belief propagation, where you can use variational inference when belief propagation is not exact. And uh, Kalman filter have been also introduced in Julia. Thank you.